You know, I see many college students here today. God bless you. Always great to see you in the house. I was reminded of a young a college professor that was notoriously hard uh, and gave just the most extremely difficult tests. And, and it, this particular class was a, an advanced biology class that was studying animals. And, and this professor uh, gave the students and said, look, you know, the, the, the textbook was this thick, and he didn't give him any hints to what would be on the final exam. He said the final exam was worth 90% of your grade. Basically, if you pass the final, you pass the class. If you fail the final, you fail the class. And he gave him this big, long textbook. And so these students knew, man, this was it. They wanted to become doctors and nurses and careers, and they had to pass this class. And, and they get there the day of the exam, and they had studied and studied and studied. And on the exam, the, the professor had a table up at the front, and he took a tablecloth off, and there were three sets of feet, of bird feet, three different sets of bird legs. And he said, okay, here's the test. There's three sets of bird legs up here, and uh, <laughs> what you have to do is identify each species of bird, the kingdom, the phylum, and the class, and give us every part of the, the, the species of each bird just by looking at the feet. Well, the students just gasped for air. None of that was in the textbook. They had never seen this material before. And so the, the students were, were beginning to murmur and complain, and the professor doubled down. He said, look, you need to, tell, you need to take this test. It, give, me the, give me these three species. You should know this based on the material. Uh, you should just be smart enough to get this. And finally, one young man back in the back stood up and said, excuse me, professor, but this is just not right. And the professor said, you need to sit down and take the test. The young man said, look, I paid a lot of money to come to this college. You're going to sabotage my career. I want to be a doctor. And the professor said, I don't care. You sit down. The young man stood up on his desk. He said, I'm telling you what, this is an unjust, terrible uh, test and this is a farce against education. You have no right. And the professor said, Let me, excuse me, young man, I'm going to report to you to your dean. Tell me, what is your name? And the student said this. He said, you tell me. <laughs> All right. That's funnier than you laughed. <laughs> what to speak of amazing grace the next two Sundays. Our key scripture today is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Grace is a supernatural endowment from God that covers, cleanses, and endows with the power of God. It covers, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, and love covers a multitude of sin. It cleanses. 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Romans chapter 5, verse 20 and 21. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. And it endows us with power as believers. Zechariah 4, 7. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain with shouts of grace, grace to it. First Peter tells us to minister to one another by the power of the grace of God, the manifold grace of God in our lives. <laughs> I'm not going to get too deep into this today. I want to intro it to you today. We'll come back next week and hit it a little bit. Saving grace, amazing grace, the spectrum of grace. Grace covers cleanses and empowers or endows. One of my, Andrew and I, 
when we were young and still in Bible college, we, we signed up with our church to go out into the streets and preach the gospel and knock on doors. And we actually did it in the name of, of teenage ministry. And one of my first awesome encounters, not only personally, but I saw in somebody else's life that I had a hand in, with the amazing grace of God, was a young man named Peter, Peter the Bump Bump Peter. We went to the bad parts of, of Columbus, Ohio, and a lot of inner city kids. And here I was, just a, a, a farm boy from Guernsey County, Ohio, grew up on a horse farm or grew up farming life. I, I've shoveled more than my share of manure. Uh, I don't ever, ever, ever want to shovel another load of horse manure the rest of my life. People say, do you like horses? No, I prefer cows. They taste a lot better. <laughs> Amen. But we were knocking on a door one day and opened up the door and there's, a par there's all these kids having kind of like a kid gathering, a little party if you would. Uh, and I said, hey, can I come in a second? They said, sure. And I just started preaching. And a lot of those kids got saved right then and there. We brought in a bus, took them to church. And one of those young men was named Peter, Peter, the bump, bump, Peter. Now, I had enough good enough sense not to ask what a bump, bump was. Uh, I, I didn't want to know. That's what his friends called it. And back then, gangster rap was really popular. That stuff was poison for the soul, man. I'm embarrassed to say I listened to that when I was in college. That was some nasty. You know why they sound so mad, right? Because they can't sing. <laughs> but Peter, Peter the bump on Peter didn't have a dad in his life. Being raised by a single mom, and she was part of the armed forces. And they moved around a lot. And he ended up in the wrong crowd more often than not when they moved. And we had a chance to spend a few months with Peter, Peter. And loved on him, took him to church every Wednesday and Sunday, and developed quite a relationship. And I remember he came to us with tears in his eyes and said, my mom got a call, we got to move again. And can you imagine for a young person who's finally starting to find some good roots, and all of a sudden you're going to move and you get uprooted, and he's going to end up in another school, another state, and not know what's going to happen to him. But he had tears in his eyes, and we went over to visit him and his mother, and his mother just began to cry a little bit and said, thank you for what you've done in his life. He's a new man. And you know what I found? As a young man, I found that the grace of God can cover a young person running with the wrong crowd in the inner city of Columbus, Ohio, named Peter Peter, the bump bump eater. And if he can cover a guy with a name like that, I'm sure he can cover you. There's another person, oh my goodness, uh, I, I was ingrained in the basketball culture, and uh, I had a cousin that lived in a nice part of Columbus, a nice suburb, and I, I think some folks here are familiar with the culture and sports where some of the small private schools will recruit and give scholarships to the best athletes in the city. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. Um, and so what they do is they recruit, and, 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 and they'll, they'll bring in the best talent, and then they win state championship after state championship after state championship. And, and my cousin's best friend was named Ann, and her dad was the basketball coach of one of these schools. And so he was, you know, if, you know how it is. I mean, when, when there's a notoriously famous coach for winning state championships, I mean, they just have a, one, they, they have a lot of privilege afforded to them. And this young lady was profane. This young lady was highly emotional. This young lady was a party animal. This young lady was just, if you could look up spoiled brat in the dictionary, her picture would be there. And one day, my cousin said, I'm going to bring this young lady to church. And I was so righteous. I was so holy. I was so full of faith. I laughed. And I said, that'll never work. The dumbest thing I could have said. 
And do you know that not in church? This spoiled brat person, this profane person who was everything God was not, found herself at the altar and weeping and weeping and weeping as she discovered she was a sinner and she needed a Savior. God's grace covers spoiled brats. There was a, another young lady named Kim. And Kim was, she had, grew up in a broken family. She was a friend of mine from college. And Kim uh, invited me to a party at her house after I'd gotten saved. And, and she, she, she called me and said, man, you got to come. It's going to be a great party. You're going to want to be there. I said, I don't think I can come. Said, oh, come on, man. You need to come. You need to come. And I said, I just, I just, that's just, that's just not me. I, I don't, I don't, I made up some excuse. I can't come. I hung up the phone. And you know, one of the times there again, I heard the voice of the Lord and he shared with me, go to that party. And I reminded God, hey, I'm a Christian now. I can't go to parties. Do you, and he said, no, I want you to go. You'll lead her to the, to, to the Lord tonight. I said, what? He said, yeah, I want you to go. I said, okay, so I called her back. And back then, you're, some of you don't know what this means, but the, the phone had a, 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 a string attached to it. <laughs> and like it had these numbers. And you, if you misdialed, you had to hang up and start over. You couldn't just hit the back button. And there were no emojis or gifts or anything like that. It was just, just numbers. It was so, I don't know how we got anything done. And I dialed this digit code on there. That not stored in memory either. Somebody will remember what a black book was. Raise your hand if you know what a black book was. Amen. Tell you what, get your black book out. Punch your number in. Get, Kim, I'm coming to the party. She's all excited. So I go. I get there to that party, and it's everything she said it would be, and I was just miserable. I, don't, I didn't fit in with that crowd anymore. And so I found myself just doing nothing, doing nothing, doing nothing. And I said, well, clearly I'm such a failure. I miss God. I thought I heard God said to come to this party. I clearly didn't, so I'm going to leave. And so I go, get in my car to leave, and here comes Kim running out. Hey, where are you going? Where are you going? I saw oh, Kim, thank you for the invite, but it's just, it's just that I, I just don't feel like, I, I just don't fit in with this crowd anymore. She said, well, why not? I said, well, let me tell you. Jesus saved me. I found out that everything I was living for, it wasn't right. And I began to share my testimony. And you know what happened? Kim started crying. And she said, oh, I used to believe in God, and I walked away, and I'm living the party scene. Would you pray with me that I can get saved tonight? <laughs> and she got saved that very night. You know, and uh, I don't know how, we, we have so many stories like that we could share. People in prison who've gotten right with God. Um, we have people in our Celebrate Recovery group every Friday night who are overcoming and, you know, not only have they been covered, but they're being cleansed. God is giving them the power over hurts and habits and hang-ups. We have people in this church who've overcome. Some of them were even part of a cult, not by their own will, but were raised in it and had to break free from that. We've had others who had been molested and raped as a child. And they went through life with great pain and bitterness and hurt. And in that pain and bitterness and hurt, they found along the way the loving arms of amazing grace that took them in and healed them of their past. We even have people here on every level. We have people here today that are saying, you know, Pastor, I had everything going right, and I still found I needed to know Jesus. We have people here who everything was going wrong, and they found they needed to know Jesus. There's a common thread among all of us. You see, when we walk in the doors of the church, 
when we walk into the doors of the church. There's no big I's and little U's. We come in today, our economic status does not matter. What side of the tracks we grew up on does not matter. We come in today, what nationality we are, what gender we are, all those things, male, female, black, white, Hispanic, Chinese, Filipino, Japanese, Kenyan. By the way, if you're a runner, you saw a Kenyan runner yesterday ran a marathon in under two hours. Insane in a good way. But when we come into this place, we're here not as a hierarchy of any way, shape, or form. We're here because we need Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want to just speak to you today about this amazing grace. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. Many of you can recall a song that we sing, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. And you know who wrote that song? His name was John Newton. And John Newton was a slave trader. He was a captain of a slave ship. And in his lifetime, he had taken many people against their will. He had bought them from Africa. He had transported them in terrible conditions. He had had them whipped. He had had them separated from their families. He'd had some thrown overboard when they were sick. He was notoriously evil. He was one of the most horrible person to commit crimes against humanity. And he profited greatly from trading slaves. And in his life, he realized, I am a sinner. And he discovered Jesus Christ. And he got radically born again. And when he did, he wrote a little poem, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound that saved a wretch like me. And sir, uh, John Newton would partner with a parliamentarian in the English parliament named William Wilberforce, and they dedicated the rest of their lives to overturning slavery, to which they were successful. And they, just, they said because of their faith in Christ, that is what compelled them to keep on going on, and they knew that it was God's will that nobody would be oppressed like that. Here's what I want you to know today. God's grace is absolutely amazing. God's grace, and this is just our introduction next week, I'll get a little deeper into it. But God's grace, God's grace covers us of our sin. This morning I gave you the picture of Jesus Christ himself washing your feet. God's grace cleanses us from the inside out. Not only does he cover us from our sin, but there is a power available to overcome. And he empowers us. We are what we are by the grace of God. Oh my goodness, there's so much I want. I'm going to be preaching this a little harder next week. Today I'm just giving you a nice Loving intro, but next week I'm going to light myself on fire and you can just watch me burn. <laughs> because I, I want to get excited. We start talking about, we start talking about next week the empowering power of grace to make us better than we are. Hallelujah. You know, I just. I think I'm in the right church, but this morning when we were having worship, I was overwhelmed in so many ways. I was overwhelmed by not only the words we were singing and the presence of Jesus that was in here, but I was overwhelmed by the quality of our ministry and the people that we have that 
love the Lord so much and give him their talents. And I was thinking how we came from a conference room in a day's end. And by God's amazing grace, how Andrea, who couldn't play keyboard, learned to play keyboard so that we could have a praise and worship team. And I was thinking about how God's grace took us from a day's end conference room to a one-room church. And buddy, we have some memories from that place. And then when it could no longer hold us, God's grace took a bunch of folks out in the middle of a cornfield, the children of the corn. (laughs) And we raised the money to be able to buy a repossessed funeral home. What happened? Well, we brought the dead to life. (laughs) And by God's grace, We filled it in one Sunday. Went to two services and eventually three, and by God's grace. You know what they said about Jesus? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You know, Nazareth was a a 20-minute walk outside of Jerusalem. Nazareth is where all the blue-collar workers lived who would go to Jerusalem to work. Nazareth was a rough town. Jesus, blue collar Jesus, was raised in Nazareth. And they said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I don't know about you, but I've I've heard similar sentiment about Putnam County in this area of our state. Can anything good come out of Cloverdale? Can anything good come out of Putnam County? Can anything good come out of Owen County? By amazing grace, yes, it can. By amazing grace, yes, absolutely, it can. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask every head to bow and every eye to close. I want to make a simple appeal today. If you'd like to accept this amazing grace into your life, to cover, cleanse, and empower you. I want to ask today, is there somebody here who said, Pastor Matt, I need to ask Jesus into my heart. I don't want to live another day without him. I recognize I am a sinner and I need a savior. I recognize there is a heaven and there is a hell. And I want to commit my life to go to heaven. There is an amazing grace available to you today. It could save a slave trader like John Newton. It could save a highly arrogant, egotistical basketball player like me. It can save a drug addict, a drug dealer, a murderer. There's people here today and there's young people here today. You've even experimented with LGBT lifestyle. It can save you. You're not too far gone. You're not too far gone. If that's you today, you say, Pastor, I want to give my heart to accept Christ. Would you raise your hand just high enough and long enough for me to see it? Really quick, and then we'll pray with you. See a hand over there to my right. Thank you. Anybody else in here today? Thank you on the front row. Thank you over there to my left. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Trina, thank you. Can look up. Trina, can can I share her story just for a moment? Is that okay? Can can I can I tell tell people to pray for you? Come here, Miranda. Is it Miranda? Is that, no, what's your name? What is it? Maddie. Come, 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 come. Please. You know what it's like to be a pastor? Let me show you. This precious little thing stole my heart this past Wednesday night. What, what's your name again? Maddie. Maddie. I said Madeline. Madeline, right? Yeah. Didn't I say that? Yeah. What did I say? Miranda. Miranda. Madeline. You know, starts with an M. I just saw in the front row there, is it okay if I tell people what you just did? She, she raised her hand to give her heart to Christ today. Yeah. And uh, but she, she was telling me a little bit about herself on, on Wednesday night. Can I, is it okay if I just share a couple things? Mm-hmm. You're nine years old. I said you're very tall for being nine, aren't you? Yeah. 
I like that. Tall, tall's good. <laughs> you know, she's had a she's had a, a rough home life, and I don't want to get into too many details. But she knows she's been to five schools in the last two years, and she knows she's going to be going to many more. And she's had situations where some negative words have been spoken over to her by people who should say positive things to her. I don't want to incriminate anybody or anything, but at the same time, this is a precious nine-year-old. This is a precious little, she's nine years old, and she's already had to carry burdens that 30-year-olds aren't equipped to carry. And here she is up here, and she is a trooper. She's a champion. And we got to pray with her a little bit, but today she wants to make a public profession that she's accepting Christ as her Savior. And, and I, you know, one of the hard parts about being a pastor is knowing that there's a chance you won't be here for another year from now. But you know what? Remember what I told you Wednesday night? This is the one I want to tell all y'all. This, I told her, this building is going to stand here, and I'm going to be here. So maybe when she's 17 or 18 or 20 years old, and who knows what part of the state she lives in or the country. There's a place she can go to and remember that God touched her here. And there's a people that will always be here to say, we love you, we care for you, and God's got a very wonderful future for you. And little girl, I want you to know I work very hard here. I, I know people think I just work on Sundays. I work on Wednesdays too. <laughs> I work very hard, but I want you to know you're the reason I work so hard. You're the reason my wife down there, you're the reason why she works so hard. You're the reason why we come here and pray twice a week publicly. You're the reason why I study my Bible really hard. You're the reason I pray. You're the reason I endure some difficult things because we're all about people just like you and we love you and we're proud of you. And I want you to see this whole church. Look up here, everybody. And I want you to see everybody here. We're going to pray for you and we're going to believe God for you and we're going to believe God for your future. And we're going to believe God that his hand is going to be upon you. And that God's going to speak to you what he spoke to me. How much more will I love you and be a father to you? And that's what I'm praying God's going to speak to you. Amen. So will you help me say the sinner's prayer today? And so all you have to do is repeat a prayer after me. Is that okay? In front of all these people? Will you do it? No? Okay. <laughs> I'll put her on the spot. Well, I'm going to have everybody else help us out, okay? So there's, there's three other people that said, hey, Pastor, I want to give my heart to Christ today. Uh, we're going to all pray, but those three, I want you to pray today. This is for you. And just what I said to Miranda, I say to you. I say to you. Are you making faces up here? M Madeline. Madeline. Have you ever thought about changing your name? No. Okay. Just curious. Okay. Well, let's pray. Hold my hand. And you repeat after me, but I won't make you do it in the microphone, okay? Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you into my heart today. I ask you to forgive my sins. And I ask you to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I commit my life to you. Help me to live as a Christian. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, let's give this young lady a big hand clap and all the others too. God bless you, sweetheart. God bless you. I mean that. I mean that. I, I, I know I work on Sundays and sometimes Wednesdays, but we work a few other days around here too. And uh, all the hard work, the faith, the effort, the sacrifice, there's a lot of people in this community that need Jesus Christ. And that's why we keep working. And there, there those of us that are here that are one, we need to be continually discipled and challenged in our faith. And that's part of my job, too, to challenge you and disciple your faith. Amen. So thank you for coming today. We'll see you here this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And in the meantime, and next Sunday, I'll be finishing this message or trying to finish it, part two of the wide spectrum of amazing grace. Let's pray. Father, I bless these people. I thank you for their lives today. As we go, we go in grace and wholeness and completeness in Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. amen. If you need prayer, I'll have our prayer partners down here. God bless you. We're dismissed.
Hi there, I'm Pastor Matt. I just want to take this moment and say thank you so much for tuning in to the ministry of Soul Harvest Church Online. And it's a privilege to minister to you each and every time. And I just want to invite you to be a living and active part of our vision to touch the world from West Central Indiana. And if you've been blessed by our ministry, I would ask you to very strongly consider sowing into our ministry to provide that our ministry would continue to go deeper and wider to impact people just like you all around this world that cost the precious blood of Jesus. So I would appreciate a gift of any amount. And, and I would ask if you're on YouTube, click the link below. If you're online on our website, click uh, Give Online. Or if you're on our app, hit the Give Online tab, and it'll take you through a couple easy steps, and you'd be able to sow. And we just pray God's richest blessing on you today. Thank you. God is good. His word is true. And it works in your life, friend.